acts not for me. God says he sought of them that acts not for me. Who acts not for God? The Israelites. Come on. I am found of them that sought me not. Uh -huh. I said, behold me. Behold me uh -huh. unto a nation that was not called by my name. God said, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by his name. Because our biblical name is the children of Israel. But we're not called that no more. In slavery, they changed our names. They divided us and they conquered us. Jump to verse 15. Remember what we're dealing with. The key word is our names being changed. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my... Deuteronomy 20 verse 15. All these curses... So he says, and ye shall leave your name for what? For a curse. Read on. Until my chosen. Until my chosen. The Israelites, come on. For the Lord God shall slay thee. He shall slay thee. Send you into captivity in North, Central, South America and the Caribbean islands. And call his servants by another name. Call his servants by what? And call his servants by another name. Another what? Another name. That's why we're not known as Israelites no more. One of the curses was your names would be changed. Jump back to Deuteronomy 28. So that's one example. Deuteronomy 28, verse 30, 46, 46, 46. Deuteronomy 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon there for a sign. Read it again. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. A sign. What's the sign? These curses. A sign is what? Who are the Israelites? That's why God had Moses record that. So in the latter days, the time we are in now, we would understand who are the Israelites. So let's find out. Read on. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. The wonder is these are the biblical Israelites. When you read search these scriptures, you're going to wonder, okay, I read about Israel, Israel, Israel. But who are the Israelites? That's what Deuteronomy 28 is for. It's a sign and a wonder. Jump to verse 47. This is why we went into slavery. Read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with... With joyfulness, with joyfulness, and with gladness of heart, and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things, for the abundance of all things, come on. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. We didn't want to serve God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, like one of the laws, Sabbath days. We didn't want to keep that. Ah, oh, that Sabbath day again. The hell is this? We didn't want to serve God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. So he says, therefore, what? Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. Shall we serve our enemies, read? Which the Lord shall send against thee. Which the Lord shall send against thee. So who sent Columbus against us? Which the Lord shall send against thee. What caused the Africans and the Arabs to sell us? Which the Lord shall get sent against read thee. Read on. In hunger. In slavery. Who do we have to go to for food? Our slave master. So it says in hunger, read. And in thirst. If people don't pay their water bill, what's going to happen? They're going to shut that water off. That's why he said you're going to have to go to somebody else for Thirst. Read. And in nakedness. And clothing to clothe your body. Who do we have to go to? Our enemies, the slave masters. That's who we have to go to. We have to go to them to get clothing. Read. And in want of all things. Anything we want, we would have to go to our enemies. Come on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. There's a famous picture of slaves having yokes of iron upon their necks. Blacks and Latinos, because a lot of Latinos, they say, they think when Columbus came, he said, como estas? He didn't say that. You didn't understand the language he spoke. Because he spoke Spanish, you spoke Hebrew. So it says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon their neck. In Roots, Mandingo, Amistad, and in many slave pictures, you see slaves with yokes of iron upon their neck. Read on. Until he have destroyed thee. Until, until, until he have what? Until he have destroyed thee. When those yokes came off, that proved we've been destroyed. Because we don't know who we are. We don't know our nationality. We don't know our land or our language. Read on. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. The Lord is going to bring a nation against thee from far. Moses is going to get very descriptive on this verse. Read that part again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. From the end of the earth. From the end of the earth. As swift as the eagle flyeth. What was the symbol of Spain when they came against the Indians? The eagle. So Moses leaving clues of who he's talking about was conquered. Read on. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Because we didn't understand the language the Spaniards spoke. Come on. A nation of fierce countenance. A nation of fierce countenance. Because when Columbus came, there's a book by Bartolomé de las Casas. He, was, he would inscribe everything he's seen that Columbus did. Columbus took young babies and would smash them against rocks. They would play a game who could toss the baby in the air and slice his stomach with one slash. That was, that's why he said a nation of fierce 
countenance. They didn't spare nobody. Come on. We shall not regard the person of the old. We shall not regard the person of gray hairs, an old man, an old woman. Come on. Now show a favor to the young. This is an example of a picture of how he's taking a young baby. This is from the book by Tony De La Casa. A short account of the destruction of the Indies. They taking a baby and smash him against rocks. They would have a log built and hang them on each on the side of, on the top of the log right here. They had they have them hang. And they would set a fire right here so they could burn their legs. That's why he says, a nation of fierce countenance. Read that part again. A nation of fierce countenance. Fierce countenance, come on. We shall not regard the person of the old. We shall not regard the person of the old. Nor right? show favor to the young. Nor show favor to the young. Because that's a clear image. They didn't spare the young. They killed them. Read verse 68. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall... Hold on, hold on. How did the blacks and Latinos get to the different lands of their slavery? Transportation. Anybody knows? Wait, say it again. Boats. Read Deuteronomy 20, verse 68. And the law shall bring thee into Egypt. Wait, what does the word Egypt mean? Hold that. Exodus 20, verse 2. What is the biblical definition of Egypt? Because history proves the Israelites just came out of Egypt. We just came out of Egypt. But he says, and the Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. What Egypt is he talking about? Read it. Exodus 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt, come on. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of what? Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of what? Out of the house of bondage. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 20, verse 6, 8. Let's see what was Moses talking about when he said, you're going to go into Egypt again. What is this Egypt synonymous for? Come on, read it. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord is going to bring you into Egypt again with what? With ships. With what? With ships. So the word Egypt means bondage. The word Egypt means slavery. The word Egypt means captivity. So he says, I'm going to bring you into slavery again, but this time with what? With ships. Read on. By the way of I spake unto thee. Moses said, just like how I'm telling you it's going to happen. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. What were we not going to see no more again? Our homeland, our native land, Jerusalem. Read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. And there, meaning those different lands of your slavery, America, Trinidad, Puerto Rico, El Salvador, Guatemala. And there you should be what? And there you should be sold unto your enemies for bondmen. This is history. History proves when the slaves got off those ships, they would cast bids on them. I got $50 for one Negro. I got $60 for one Indian girl. Read. Therefore you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen. Slave men. And bondwoman. Slave woman. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. That's an old Quaker word meaning no man shall save you. No man shall redeem you. Because what? We had Harry Tubman rise. She couldn't redeem us from it. We had Marcus Garvey rise. He couldn't redeem us from it. We had, uh, give me some other things. Sojourner Truth. She couldn't redeem us from it. That's why Martin it says, and no man shall buy Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. They couldn't redeem us from this. So go to verse... Go to Jeremiah 17, verse 4. Jeremiah 17, verse 4. Let me make sure. Yeah, Jeremiah 17, verse 4. That's what I want. Because we so some of the clues that we have, our names will be changed in slavery. Our sons and daughters will be given to another people. We will go into slavery with ships. And this is the history recorded in the Holy Bible. Remember, this is written thousands of years ago. But Moses said, it shall come to pass. It's not going to happen now, but it's going to happen. So read Jeremiah 17, verse 4. Jeremiah 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, mm -hmm. and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Read it again. And thou, even and thou, you Israelites, blacks and Latinos, read. Even thyself, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. From thine heritage, from thine heritage. What makes up our heritage? Laws, land, and language. We were going to discontinue from our heritage. Did we speak English? No. Was America our native land? No. Read. Shall discontinue from our heritage. So we're going to discontinue from our heritage. So that proves Deuteronomy 28 is correct. Because God told Jeremiah as well. So go to Isaiah 22. Do you guys understand so far? Thus, so, thus far, y'all understand? Okay. You sure? Okay. Isaiah 22, verse 17. Let's go there. Isaiah 22, verse 17. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity. God says, Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity. What does the word captivity mean? Anybody remember? Slavery. Read. And behold, the Lord will carry thee away from a mighty captivity mm -hmm. and will surely cover thee. And will surely cover thee. He will surely 
violently turn and toss thee like a ball. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball. What? Into a large country. Into a large country. South America, Latinos and black men, this is a large country. The Caribbean and America are large countries. Read on. There shalt thou die. There shalt thou die. Because history has recorded 77 million Indians were murdered. And during the Middle Passage, about 100 million Negroes were murdered. That's why he said, there shalt thou die. 